also as a priest, um, and that's what makes your ministry so very interesting, that you're a musician and a priest. Um, what, it is, what is it about the power of music that is drawing young people in? Um, you know, how do you think that, um, that having music in their background can bring that attraction to Christ, to fulfilment, to make it a stronger bond with Christ? I think... Um Music is a powerful thing. You see, music has the power to transcend the mind and go straight to the heart. It's the language of the heart. And I think there's no greater way to open the door of a heart to preach the gospel than through an open heart. And so I believe that music um, is not an end, but uh, very often, even though it, it has its own beauty, but it is a means to reaching the hearts of people. So it's a, a means of, of getting people ready um, to receive the gospel of Christ, and that is the love of Christ. Uh, so I, I, it, I think it, music is all often a way of disarming those who sometimes find it difficult to move from the completely um, physical, material world to a, a world where God wants to impact and touch the hearts and the lives of people. So I'm grateful for the gift of music, and I see this often in schools. I see this often wherever I go. Uh, you go, you speak, there's this priest coming to talk to us, but the minute we pick up a guitar, we play music. It's just a whole different atmosphere because they're ready to receive. You've spoken their language. You've spoken the language of the heart. Thank you. Um, Bishop, we're constantly told by the media um, and by social commentators that, you know, the church is no longer relevant. How do you think the church can become relevant for young people in particular today? Sometimes the church has not always been that good at listening and, it's, and, and connecting. And I just find but being able to sit down in a, a conference like this, a, a festival like this, and actually talk to young people and have them, I was pulled up out there, um, and just wanted to talk, to talk about belief in God and just to have that access, that, that connection. I think that's what we probably need to do more in the church and actually, if you get that connection, it's, it's very, very strong. And I think that's, that's the key. That's the key. And I think the festival really does that. And it's a great lead up to the plenary council in that regard. Joe, you're prolific on social media. You're, um, you know, you're getting out there to the hundreds of thousands. So, but social media can often be a escape from reality for many young people in today's in today's world. Um, and in, as we said with yourself, that it's a place to open, um, to be a place to open oneself to um, uh, to the world. How can social media be used to glorify God? And, and your experience of that. Um, Psalm 150, one of my favorites, uh, it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So we need to use everything that we do, um, every breath that we take throughout the day to glorify God with it. Social media is just one tool to glorify God. Um, I've heard it said that social media, there's nothing wrong with social media, it just exposes us and where we really are in our lives. And so in social media, I want to use it as a way to say, I'm an unashamed believer. I believe in Jesus. I love Jesus. I have a family. I struggle with life at times. Um, I want to be able to connect. And a lot of times what we need to look at it as um, we're building a community. And we can build, be building a community for Christ. And there will definitely be people that will reach out to me, send me direct messages about concerns that they have. Um, you know, does God love me? Um, I know a middle schooler reached out and said, I've done a lot of bad things in my life, how can I be forgiven? And it's like these questions, it's, it's just a vehicle, you know? Um, just like 
we were talking about you know coming up to you and asking questions. Everybody's got questions. We need to support each other on our journey. Be companions. We need to cheer people people on. I know sometimes. I mean, you can choose. You can tear people down. You can build people up. And I want to encourage everyone to use every source of social media conversation to build people up and be like Jesus to others. Sabrina, when you um, speak to young people, you don't see the church, um, who don't see the church, sorry, or faith as um, generally very important. How do you explain your faith to them um, coming from your experience Um, You live in the north of Australia, Um, you know, you're also Aboriginal and your experience there as well as a young woman as well. I think it's important to acknowledge that there is a difference between what the church is and what faith is in that sense. Uh, Like the church is the institution or the organisation that we are a part of and then your faith is based on your own personal and individual experience. So there's no one size fits all to your faith journey. Um, And I think that that's something that I needed to hear when I was younger. Um, So it's something that I want to share with other people now, that if your faith journey isn't as good as or as as whatever you want it to be as somebody else's, it's important to remember that your time is coming. And the more you say yes, the more opportunity that God will use you for and and bring to you. Um, As an Aboriginal person, there's a lot of challenges that I face within the church, I feel. Um, Like, where do I belong within the church? What is the Church of Australia going to be for us? Um, And not just us as Aboriginal people and Islander people, but us on a whole level, like all of Australia, you know, we just want to share faith with everyone and share culture as well, like the uh, the beautiful welcome to country we received this morning. Um, And I think from that perspective, faith is something that we live by every single day as Indigenous people. You have faith that the seasons will turn and bring you what you need to bring you. So it's the same as your faith with Jesus, like you have, you believe, you just know inside your heart that he'll provide you with what you need in time. And Kendall, uh, for yourself, what is it that you're, um, that you're looking for today with this festival? And what do you think will be some of the main aspects that young people will take home with them? Looking through the actual program of ACYF, there's so many things that you can plug yourself into and find um, answers to your questions. As a young person, um, many of us, 5,000 and more of us came here for mainly two purposes. One is to deeper our relationship with Jesus Christ and second is to um, journey um, with other young people and learn about their challenges and share our experiences with each other Um, and for me because I value um, wisdom um, knowing about the church's teachings um, going to the talks and uh, hearing about um, what other people how they live their lives in their own vocation um, how they live their lives glorifying God in their own ways because we're all unique Um, and as a young person I think we're all searching for meaning of life and how we could live a life so that um, it's for God. And for some people, it's all, we're all from different, I guess, um, journey in terms of our faith. Some are looking for an inspiration and how to deeper that relationship with God. Um, So wherever you go, I think throughout the festival, even if it's the the expos, it's a great way to find support. The the structure that's that's surrounding us is important so that we we find um, what's this where where we can belong and live a life for Christ. Yeah, just to mention a few because there's so many, definitely. And one of them is music as well. Lots of young people, they music resonates with them, as Father um, Galea said. Um, music is a language of the heart. Is that what you said? Something along those lines. And I think many people um, just walking to the city with the young people, they've got the music on and they're just. Um, They're just so lively and happy to belong in a community where um, everyone's together in faith. Yep. Great. Thank you all very much for responding. We can possibly take a couple of questions from the floor um, if there is one. Yes, Francis.
So did you all hear that? So what are we hearing from the youth today in the church? It's a bit hard to answer in the first day, but, but one thing that's been clear from, from myself going around talking about is that this yearning, yearning for the Holy Spirit, like there's, there's this yearning, they want something. There's this whole thing of that, that the world cannot actually satisfy their needs. The anxieties around young people today with problems and the fears out there are just enormous. It's, it's a problem we have in our society and it's just that they want peace. They want happiness. They want a strong spiritual life. And whatever that may look like, that's what we're here at the festival to have a look at. But that's the sense I get from it. It's very, very simple. And they, they want to have hope too. I mean, hope's so important. I come from a diocese that's in the midst of the worst drought that they've ever had. And a lot of, for a lot of our people, hope's very, very on short supply. But we're still kicking there. The young people come here and everyone else, the, it's that the community aspect and the, everyone's together and it helps those that are struggling. So I think it's really, really important for us. It's, it's like from dioceses that are, let's say, outback, small, um, isolated people to come together and, and, and share as one your faith is like a shot in the arm, which is just amazing. And let's just go back to the bush and, you know, live life again. It just gives it that real, real spirit, which I imagine that does the same thing for those that live in the city anywhere. Coming together having this time with the Lord allows you to get back into life and get through some of the difficulties you might face. Great. Was there anyone else? Okay. Um, yes, Gavin. Yeah, look, um, I think one of the, the things of social media is that it is the largest community of young people, of any people in the world. So it is the place um, where we can reach people the most. And, but the thing is, it's too easy to become inauthentic. It's too easy to hide behind the visco cam, the face tune, and make yourself beautiful, and everything's amazing. But that's the, uh, and as though our life is extraordinary. But the reality is, if you think about even the lives of the saints, it is the ordinary that made them extraordinary. Their depression, their anxiety, their struggles to say yes, their, their battle, their wrestling with God, that is what made them saints. Not the moments that they spoke in front of people and they, they got their icons made. And they, it, is, it is the ordinary that makes us extraordinary. And I believe that even as a priest, my vocation is to make sure that the people rise up to be the extraordinary saints that they're called to be. But I have to walk with them in the ordinary. And that also includes showing me and myself that I'm a human. I'm a priest. I'm an ordained priest. But I struggle. I find it difficult to get out of bed in the morning some days. I have, and I've written a book about it so I can talk about it. I have struggled since a teenager with depression, anxiety. And so I'm not afraid to talk about this, but I still know that even my depression, my anxiety, my struggles, my addictions in my past can never stop me from becoming the saint that I'm called to be. You see, it is, it is even through the ordinary that I believe that God makes us extraordinary. So um, I think that's our responsibility as social media to give a whole view uh, times I talk about going to the gym, times I, I, I talk about you know, struggling to get out of bed, times I'm celebrating mass, T sometimes I'm on a stage in front of 6,000 people, you know? But this is the ordinary, me being on the stage, but getting off the stage and being absolutely an introvert, wanting to run away from people. You see, this is me. It's not the extraordinary um, limelight person they see um, standing behind a guitar, but I struggle too, and people need to see that. Joe, maybe perhaps you can also tell us, you've got a young family, you know, and many young people here today are looking for a vocation, whether that be marriage, priesthood, religious life. Can you tell us, you know, about your own journey in your vote to, to come to your vocation and what do you think can help young people today 
um, that are trying to live the faith and, and looking for a vocation. Um, so you can never go wrong with running to God. You just immerse yourself in God. Focus on Jesus. Spend time with Jesus. Pray. Surround yourself with people that love God. Surround yourself with people that are better than you at loving God. Um, it's so important um, that we go to God first for everything. We can ask so many questions all day. We can get so many uh, different advice. I'm going to call this person for advice. Well, have you gone to God first and asked for advice? I didn't know Jesus until I was 15 years old. I went on a, re a retreat. Uh, my friend, his name was Santiago Turbe, he was a real guy. He was a soccer player, team captain, invited me to go on retreat. I trusted him. I went on this retreat, changed my life. Um, we need to be real people that can connect and invite people to God. Um, now, um, my, my wife, Noelle, my daughter, Antoinette, um, I just can't imagine our life without God in the middle. I don't know who I'd be. I don't know where I'd be right now without Jesus. I know without Jesus, uh, I'm nothing. So the, the gift, anything, music I make, it's all God. It, I didn't have rhythm, okay? And now I dance and make, I rap, okay? So it's Holy Spirit. So if you don't have rhythm out there, God can help you out. <laughs> um, so yeah, it just, uh, the, the, I don't want to overcomplicate it. Go to God first, immerse yourself in scripture, pray, spend time with Jesus. Um, sit still, be quiet, and let, let God really speak to you. And just know that he loves you, and he wants, he wants to love you. Sabrina, one more for you. Um, many uh, young people today are struggling with their faith. Um, what can you um, tell them, particularly in light of the many issues with mental health, body image, um, social media, and all the different aspects that that involves, bullying, drugs, alcohol? You know, what can you say to someone that is, um, you know, struggling with, with the life of the world and trying to come to, to God? Um, I, think, I think it's very important to ask questions if you don't understand something. If there's something that's happening in your life and you're confused by it, yeah, I think you should turn to God and, and take that time to find inside um, where the silence is because the world is so noisy. There's so much going on. There's so much demanding our attention that if you just sort of sat for a moment and asked God to be present with you, I think you will find um, an answer that works for you. I also think it's important for people to remember that God has made you who you're meant to be. So if he can love you, then you can love yourself. Um, and that's something I struggled with growing up um, with some issues that I dealt with. And at the end of the day, I always knew that God was the father that I needed and he was there for me. So that's how I sort of overcome a lot of issues that I faced in my own life. Great. Thank you very much for your time here today and all the best for the rest of the festival and your performances. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, man.